Hi, I'm Effort Ojubeli from Chama Lofen, and I'm here with Welcome Lady Polarity. Today we'll be discussing an exciting, fascinating, and impactful aspect of our legal tradition, which is legal maxims. First and foremost, legal maxims are short established principles or rules usually expressed in Latin that conveys fundamental truth or guiding principles within the legal system. One of the remarkable features of legal maxim is their universality. Those legal maxims are versatile enough to be applied in different areas of law, such as contract law, commercial law, property law, equity, criminal law, constitutional law, law of thought, law of evidence, and so on and so forth. However, we will be dwelling on equity, criminal law, constitutional law, property, and contract law. Stay tuned. In equity, we have he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. It simply means that a party cannot seek equitable relief if he has acted unethically or in bad faith as regarding the subject matter of the claim. Also, we have equity that no other does not be It means that the court will not grant remedies or orders that are impractical, impossible, and pointless to enforce. Next is, if you do not suffer a wrong without remedy, you be juice, you be remedy. It simply means that where there is a legal right, there should be a corresponding remedy. It is important to note that equity intervenes when legal remedies are insufficient or unavailable. So the next area of law we are going to be focusing on is the criminal law. We have the violating non-criminal which means to a willing person, no injury or harm is done. This area of law applies when a person voluntarily consents to an act which may be considered harmful or dangerous. For instance, a person who participates in sports like boxing, skydiving. Another legal maxim is no non-criminal no crime, no punishment without the law. That is, a person cannot be punished for an act that was not defined as a crime by law as at the time it was committed. So we have the act of non necessary, which means an act doesn't make a person guilty unless there is a guilty mind. This principle emphasizes that for a person to be criminally liable, the person has to commit an act that is the act of duress and a wrongful intent. Intention must be proved. The next area of law we are going to be focusing on is the constitutional law. Nemo means no one should be a judge in his or her own case. That is, individuals should not educate matters in which they have personal interest, thereby bringing about impartiality and justice. Following it up, we have the state societies, which is a very common maxim in constitutional law. It means to stand by decided things. It emphasizes that lower courts are bound by the precedent made by superior courts in similar matters. So next, we have the epistem generation which means of the same kind or the same class. This, according to this rule, when lawmaker lists specific items full and follows it up with a general word, the general word is interpreted in the context of the specific item. The state is not liable for actions taken in the performance of its duties, thereby promoting stability in governance. The next area of law is property law. We have the which means whatever is planted on the land belongs to the land. It implies that whatever is attached or affixed to the land becomes part of the land or belongs to the landowner. Nemo et simply means that no one is the head of a living person. That is, inheritance right to a person's property only arise upon their death. Alright, the last one under property law, we have the memo that for the law affects, which means you can't give what you don't have. It's a fundamental principle in property law 
that means you can't transfer a better title to your property than you possess. Another area of law we'll be looking at is the contract law. Pacta should be said that the simple means that agreements must be kept. That is, contracts are binding and parties are to adhere to their terms. To crown it all, from the legal magazines discussed so far, it can be deduced that legal magazines are powerful tools used to support legal reasoning, interpretation and decision making and to provide clarity and insight as we navigate the intricacies of the legal world. From this presentation, I hope you've been able to gain something insightful. Do well to like, share and subscribe. Alright, stay tuned. Bye.